distractions. We're going to spend some time to pray. The book of Psalms says, I will enter its gates with thanksgiving. I will, I will enter its courts with praise. We want to thank God. We want to thank God for the gift of life. We want to thank God for the gift of health. We want to thank God that you don't, you didn't, you don't have to beg to eat. Many people have passed away 2020, but you're strong, you're alive. Anywhere you are, anywhere you are, I want to pause everything you're doing. Those in church are going to stand up and join. Why all of us are home, wherever you are, going to stand up and just go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead, lift up your hands and give him the praise and the glory and honor him and praise him and worship his holy name in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we worship you. Father, we praise you. Father, we honor you. We give you the praise and the glory. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of health. We thank you for your faithfulness over all the days. Thank you for your faithfulness. I want to pray and thank him for his faithfulness over your family, over your children, over your spouse. Thank him because he's a good God. Thank you because he's a kind God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We have declared, I told you last week, I said that this month, this month is a month of manifested goodness. God said in Psalm 65 verse 11, he said, it will crown our year with goodness. Meaning that the best part of the year for us every year will be the last part of the year. I want to begin to declare that it's not just the year of goodness, it's the year there will be manifestation of God's goodness in my life. If you are believing God for a job, there will be manifestation of that job. If you are believing God for a financial breakthrough, there will be manifestation of that breakthrough. Anywhere you are, go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, this is the month of God of manifested goodness. In the name of Jesus Christ, I, I declare November and December, manifestation of answered prayers. Glory to God. Oh, manifestation of answered prayers. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Things are picking up. They are picking up. All the prayers have been answered. Testimonies are breaking from the right, on the left, on the center. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the last thing we want to do this today is this. We want to prophesy. The Bible says, I prophesy as I was commanded. And the dry bones came alive. That's what Ezekiel said. I don't know what feels dead in your life. Maybe, maybe it's your business that's been struggling. You're going to say in the name of Jesus Christ, command the business to rise up. Maybe it's a delayed payment. You're going to command the payment to come through. Maybe it's a pregnancy. You're going to command it to come through in the name of Jokai. Maybe it's a depression. You're going to command it to go. We have authority in the name of Jokai. I want to take your place of power anywhere you are. I want to begin to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your right hands and declare, I have authority in the name of Jesus Christ and based on the finished work of Calvary I take my place as a son of power and I begin to declare right now in the name of Jesus Christ go ahead and pray anywhere you are in the name of Jesus Christ we begin to declare that dry bones will live again everyone that is connected to this everyone that is a mix it may be it's a financial problem that dry bones will live again maybe it's a marital crisis that that dry marriage will come alive every marital delay will command to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ we command people that have gone through spiritual spiritual lukewarmness to be revived, to be stirred up that the fire of the Holy Spirit will be quickened in the name of Jesus Christ we command right now that dry bones will live again in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name we pray and Heavenly Father we thank you because of the confidence we have in you that you are a prayer answering God and in the name of Jesus Christ as we pray today dry bones are coming back to life in the name of Jesus Christ every strong business, every struggling career, everyone that is jobless before this year is over, there will be a miracle in your favor. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you because you've spoken to us about these seven powerful days where there will be manifestation of your power in career in business and finances and by the power of your Holy Spirit we will receive manifestations. We will receive manifestations. We will receive manifestations. In the name of Jesus Christ anyone under the oppression of Satan we command the oppression to go. Anyone that is sick in their body, we command the sick to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, as the word of God has been taught, let life and health and opening of mind come to people. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Please, it's so really nice. For all of you in church, you can have your seat. And for those of you at home, you know, I want to get your Bibles as we delve into it today. Last week, by the grace of God, 
I began to talk about, I began to talk about how God is leading us into entrepreneurial success even at this time. Just before I go into the message, I have to talk to you about the next level prayers. Just a couple of days ago, we had almost 15,000 people join us in live prayer all over Facebook, YouTube, Mixella, social media. Almost 15,000 people join us like that. And what, I've, I've had testimonies, testimonies of how very very specific, the prophetic power of God had been flowing to people. But one of the testimonies that t- joined, touched me was a man that was paralyzed on the bed and as began to pray, the daughter laid hands on the man and the man got up and began to work. Paralyzed all through the year. You wouldn't believe this. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. Why am I saying this to you? At this season, from last Thursday, the Spirit of God had told us about the seven days and it says as we pray, everyone should come with a point of contact. So as you pray online, come with a point of contact. Come with what? A point of contact. That means if you're a tailor, your scissors can be a point of contact. If you're a student, your barrel can be a con- point of contact. A point of contact. But if you're believing God for something, maybe a house, maybe a car, maybe to get married, bring something that connects you with that thing. If you're believing for a car, bring a car key holder. If you're believing for a, a finance, get your checkbook and write the amount and bring it. And as we pray together. So this week we're praying from 6.30 a.m. on Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook, whatever method you, that pleases you. But as we pray, the anointing of God that has given other people testimonies will also give a testimony. That the testimony I shared on Instagram and it's about this person that had a business funding issue and we prayed and $85,000 came in miraculously. It's right there on Instagram. Instagram. We have another testimony of other lady that couldn't get pregnant and we prayed and she got pregnant. Several testimonies about career, about jobs. Someone testified for two years out of job. They actually got a job. You know, I'm saying this to you because I believe that, listen, God wants to perfect what he has said to you in you in 2020. Listen, when men say there's a casting down, you will say there's a lifting up. So I want to join us. Invite your friends to join anywhere there in the globe. Tomorrow morning as we pray, Monday morning. If you're watching this on Sunday, it's going to be Monday morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So this morning, I'm talking to you about moving from activities to results. Moving from activities to results. Most people feel overwhelmed, they feel frustrated, they feel as if, sometimes they even feel depressed, they feel they're motivated, they feel as if life is out of control. And the reason why is this, just one simple reason, because they do a lot, but they don't have the result for what they do. I, I, I remember that someone met me some time ago and said, why is it that I'm doing a lot and there's nothing to show for it? Some of them even seem to want to imply that God is against them. And I understand the pain, the frustration. Maybe you're maybe you the person that started so many businesses, but none of them have really thrived. Maybe you're the person that entered into so many marriage, into relationships, but none has led to marriage. And you're wondering what's happening. And this is what I'm teaching about today. Moving from activities to results. I know the pain and the heartbreak when you work so hard and you have nothing to show for it. And as difficult as that is, that is the experience of many people. Many people are working in their career and there's nothing to show for it. Many people are working in their businesses and there's nothing to show for it. As we begin to take this teaching, the Spirit of God will begin to open your eyes to what you have to do to cause it to be a leap in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to notice something, to read something rather. Mark chapter 9 in verse 17. Mark chapter 9 in verse 17. But this is the first thing I will say to you. No matter how down you feel about what your life is going, never give up. You know why? The degree to which you feel in control of your life is the degree of success and happiness you will have. If you ever feel as if my life is no longer up to me, I can't determine my success, I can't determine my results, guess what will happen to you? You will not be able to have control. You will never be able to succeed. And let me say something to you. The reason why people feel that way is this. Because Certain events happen that makes them feel helpless. Choose not to feel helpless. Let's say that you have lost a lot of money in starting up a business or you've lost a lot of money in doing a project or maybe you have delay. All your mates have gone ahead of you or you are putting off so much effort and there's no result. What you should do is not to conclude that it seems as if what I do does not matter. It's just, you know, I can't do anything. What you have to think about is this. I know that things have not turned out well. There is something I need to know. There's an empowerment I need to have that will make me take what control of my situation and that will produce for you significant success. Let's look at this in the Bible. Mark chapter 7 verse 17. 
And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto you my son who has a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, and take note of something. I want to just show you something there. When, you know, very often you begin to hear people call demons like queen of the coast. They say things of them, or banjay spirits. They say things like that. When you read the Bible, the Bible does not even reveal the names of demons. You know why? Because they're not important. Praise God. Because they're not important. He didn't even tell us this is what a demon's name is. We don't even know what any demon's name. We know the categories of demons, but not their names. Because there are Christians that specialize in knowing different names of demon spirits. But the second thing I want to show you is this. In the Bible, the Bible says this boy had a dumb spirit. So because we don't know their exact name, the demon spirits according to Bible, not according to many preachers that you know, are named after their operation or after their main characteristic feature. So, because the boy was dumb, the Bible says he was a demon spirit. The Bible speaks about the demon that caused de death on the night in Egypt. The Bible says the angel, the word angel doesn't necessarily mean a good angel. There can be good angels and there are bad angels. Satan is also an angel. The Bible says that angel of death. That's what he calls it. The Bible says, Bible speaks about a spirit of what, um, the spirit of, um, it was deaf and dumb. Bible called it the spirit of infirmity. So, it's not exact. So, why am I saying this to you? The way God describes spirits is by addressing them by the characteristic feature. I, I don't want to be dragged away by so-called ministers that begin to invent names of spirit. Let's always stick with the Bible. So, let's keep going. The Bible says, and wheresoever I take at him, it tears him apart. There's a spirit in operation. And he foamed and gasheth with the seed and panted away. And I speak to your disciples that they should cast him out. And they could not. Take note of that. They could not. And he answered, and, and he answered in response to the action of the disciples. He said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. And they brought him unto him, and he saw him. And straight away the spirit tore him, and he fell on the ground, and wallowed in foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it? How long is it ago that this came upon him? And he said, Of a child. And oftentimes he cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. The works of Satan, destruction. He says, but if thou can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Did you notice something? The father's request was simple. If you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. I want to say something very powerful here. The Bible says, and Jesus said unto him, if thou can believe all things are possible to him that believe it. You know what I just said? Jesus Christ said, if you come to me and you are saying, if, I'm going to put it back to you. And says, until you believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. Every time, and this is the secret, why some people have a tremendous result when they come to intercessions and prayers. Because they pray with certainty of what the will of God is. This man came to Jesus Christ and says, if it be your will, that my son will be healed. Jesus did not respond to that. Jesus says, uh-uh, that is not how you should ask for something. He says to the man, if you believe, Jesus, the man said, if it is your will. He says, leave this out of if. If you believe. So people are saying, God, if you want me to carry a baby, I will carry a baby. Lord, if you want me to bless me, I will bless me. If you want my business to expand, it will expand. God says, uh-uh, it's not up to me, it's up to you. He says, if you believe, all things are possible possible to him that believe it. So every time you pray and you put the responsibility on God, you are just constructing a major hindrance to your miracle. The way you are going to have a miracle is to go to God with assurance and faith and say, Father, this is what I will and this is what I know you want for me and I make a demand based on the finished work of Calvary. He says, if you will, all things are possible to him that believe it. See the man's reaction. The Bible says, and straight with the father cried out there was an instant change what did he say with tears in his eyes it says lord i believe help my unbelief someone says is it possible to believe and have unbelief yes faith can be present in your heart and there's doubt in your head your head is wondering you want to start this business that's 300 million all you have is 50 million where will 250 million come from and you believe and there's unbelief in your head he says he says i believe help my unbelief listen to me even when 
your mind is questioning, use your mouth to shut down your mind. And tell your mind and say that the arm of the Lord is not too strong to save. I understand that the doctor said some things are impossible. I understand that in your sector, in this season, people are shutting down, retrenching people, and there's no career progression. But for you that you're a child of God, you must understand that all things are possible to him that believes it. The Bible says, as soon as he said this, help my unbelief, Jesus saw people gathering. See, as soon as he said that, the long and short of story is this. Jesus Christ spoke until he took responsibility for believing. There was no response of Jesus Christ to release power. Until he took responsibility for believing, virtue did not leave Jesus Christ to release something. The Bible says this, and this is what I'm going to. Verse 28. And when he was coming to his house, the disciples that tried to cast out the demon from the child came. And when they came, they asked him, why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said, he had answered that before in the, first, in, in, in the earlier verses, saying because of their faith. He now said here, this kind, go with no, this kind come forth by nothing, but by prayer and by what? Fasting. But by prayer and by fasting. The reason I want to say, is, say this to you. Listen to what the disciples say. The apostles. The apostles, all the two of them were, were there together. And they would say, oh yeah, come out. Out, 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 out. And when they were saying all of this out, the demon did not go out. And they were wondering, why didn't he go out? But the answer to that question is in, the, is in the question they asked Jesus. What did they say? When they were back to themselves, they asked Jesus Christ, why could we not cast him out? What were they saying? Although we were trying on the outside to cast him out, on the inside we knew we could not cast him out. And I'm saying this to you because even though you act on the outside in a manner as if you want to go, if your inside is not convinced, if there's no deep-rooted conviction on the inside, that thing can happen. Your activities will amount to nothing. It's like the seven sons of Skiva. They were saying the right word and the right action. But within them, there was no conviction that that could happen. And they led into shame and disgrace. One thing I'm saying is this. So, there was activity going on the outside. But on the inside, there was no faith. There was no faith. I want to know that. Let's read another scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15. See what the Bible says here. It says, The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them because he knows not how to go into the city. He said, a foolish man will get tired. Why will he get tired? The way to go into the city, the way to get his goal, he does not have it. Let me say it in a very good way to you. He said, the foolish man will get tired because he has a goal of business expansion of 800 million naira, but he will not be able to deliver it because he doesn't know the way. He says, the way of a foolish man will get him exhausted because he wants some kind of result, but he doesn't know the way. The reason I'm saying so to you is this. There are people that listen to this today. You want to start a business. You've been on it for one or two years, but you cannot start. And the reason why you cannot start is simple. You do not know the way. You are spending your time in so much activity, but there is no significant progress. There are people on the sound of my voice today. What is your own case? You have money. You have spent money. You've rented place, but you still cannot get started. And the reason that you don't know the way to the city, so we're talking about today how to move from activities to results. You must understand the first thing, the vital resources that will bet about change and success are first within your control. So stop focusing on what you do not have. Begin to focus on the inside. So how do I, I, do I become more productive? How do I live my life in such a way that the goals I set for myself, they can actually happen? If I'm running a business, how do I make my business more productive? If I have a career, how do I increase in productivity in my career? If I'm running a business, how do I scale from a place of 50 million annual income to a place of 100 million annual income? How do I grow? And someone says, I've tried and tried. And listen to me. I understand that many people have sincerely, they've tried and tried and tried to make sure that their life will gain an upward traction. But but those things have not happened the way they want it. And that's why I'm providing you revelation by God's word. This is something you can put in place from today. Listen, the first thing is this. This is how to, have a, how to move from activity to outcome. Number one, you must have 
clearly defined outcomes. Clearly defined outcome. Clearly defined outcome. See what the Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 10 verse 51. The Bible says, and Jesus answered said unto him. This was when the blind man came to Jesus Christ. He says, what will thou that should do unto you? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my sight. It was very clear. One of the reasons why people have a lot of activities, but they don't have results is this. They don't have very clearly defined outcome. The question is this, what do you want? What do you want? So you are starting a business. What do you want from this business? Do you want, to, do you want the business to have 1,000 clients by the end of 2020? Do you want to make profit of 50 million by the end of 2020? Most people cannot articulate exactly what they want. They walk in an office and they can't tell themselves that by the end of 2020, this is what I want to earn or this is what I want in this office. If you are going to have a very productive life, the same way Jesus asked the man, what do you want? Jesus saw that obviously was blind. He says, what do you want? He says, I want to receive my sight. The man could have said, I want to receive my sight and be wealthy. But the man chose just one thing. He says, I want to receive my sight. This is how you will know if your outcomes are very clear. The way you will know is this. What does the end look like for you? When your outcome is not clear, your pace will stall and your path will become lack. Your path will become dark. If you don't know where you are going, you will arrive somewhere else. If you don't know where you are going, you will arrive somewhere else. So let me give you a practical illustration. So what do you want as a businessman? Do you want your skill? He says, I want to grow my business. Grow in what terms? So I say, I want to start a business. Start what business? Start when do you want to start it? What kind of result do you want to see? You know what I'm saying this? Until the outcomes you want are specific, it will even affect the way you pray. Once your outcome becomes specific, you are able to release the power of the spirit within. Once your outcome is specific, your mind will be able to figure out how to do it. Some people, the reason they majorly struggle is this. They want results, but their outcome is not specific. I want a business that will do logistics. Logistics where? How many, who will it attend to? Who is your target? Who is your customer? What is your unique selling proposition? Those are specific things. And notice something I said, have clearly defined outcome. Most people have defined tasks. So you will see people saying that, I want to do this, I want to do that. Those are wonderful. But what will make you very productive is that you have outcome. Outcome, why a tax is something you have to do. Outcome speaks of the end result. So you must have clearly defined outcome. You must have clearly defined outcome outcome. Someone says, so how can I have, how can I know if I have outcomes? The way you generate outcome is this, by asking questions. I'll give an example. So let's say you start a business and you want to find an outcome for yourself. You say, okay, what do I want from this business? I want to grow my business. Grow in finances. How do I grow it? I want to grow it by 50 million. You see, the more you ask yourself questions, the clearer the outcome becomes. So you need to sit down and ask yourself questions. The second thing is this, in how to move from activities to results, develop a conviction within that supports you achieving that goal. Develop a conviction within that supports you achieving that goal. In the scripture we just read today, the disciples said, why could we not cast him out? Although they knew they could not cast him out, they were exerting themselves, oh yeah, come out, oh yeah, leave there, oh yeah, come out, oh yeah, leave there. But in their heart, they knew they could not cast him out. Why am I saying this to you? It is useless and totally unprofitable to embark on things on the physical when on the inside you know you don't have faith and capacity for it. Sometimes as a pastor, I will tell people, let's write a figure you are believing God for. And I've seen people say, I'm believing God for a hundred billion naira. And I will say, my brother, if you see one billion, not a hundred billion, well, that's even too much. If you see hundred million, do you understand what it means? Do you have the capacity to contain what it means? And the reason why those things don't happen is this. They are asking and doing things on the outside that they've not conceived on the inside. So, 
This is the reason why people involved in activity and there's no results. They are really doing things that on the inside there is no faith and capacity for. So I will give an example. So there's a girl that wants to get married. She's doing all the right things, saying the right word. But on the inside, she doesn't really believe that anybody will marry her. What she does not realize is this, that predominant thought sends out signals and energy into her environment that prevents her from getting married. She might be available, she might be dressing well, but that thought emanates from the person, of, from, the, from her being. There are people that run in businesses and they will say things like, I want my business to be a hundred millionaire. But on the inside, they don't have that faith or capacity to make that happen. They begin to make moves on the outside, but there's nothing on the inside. So what happens to them? They begin to fail roadblocks and begin to face shame and the reason is because on the inside the capacity is not built listen to me if you want to change outside the first thing is change inside you change and transform inside let me give you a good example israel israel when time israel left egypt you know what the bible says the bible says god showed them through the wilderness for 40 years you know why you can take someone out of slavery but you might not be able to take slavery out of them for 40 years, you know what God was trying to do? God was trying to take slavery out of them. Unfortunately, only, only two people, Joshua and Caleb, could have that reorientation. Other people, as soon as there was a challenge, you know what they would say? Let's go back to Egypt. They were always talking and thinking like slaves. You know why? Because God understood, if I don't remove slavery out of them and I bring them to the land that flows with milk and honey, they will ruin the land because they'll be talking and thinking like slaves. So what am I saying to you? It's good to set huge goals, but your first goal must be, who do I need to become to achieve the goals that I want. You know why? Every company is a reflection of the leader. Every company is a reflection of the leader. The limit of the leader becomes the limit of the organization. Your limit in your career is your personal limit. How do you break the limit? The way you break the limit is by expanding capacity, by expanding the things you believe. You know, someone said to me one day, he said, why do people make their first money and they buy something useless? I said, because that's the level of their thinking. When they grow, they will look back and said that was a bad decision but at the level where they are no matter how much you're explaining to them they cannot see why that is not a great decision so if you're going to move from activity because this is what people do people want to change a level people want to produce some results people want to change some things what they do is that they start working and the first thing they have to do is to first develop inside that's why when Nicodemus came to meet Jesus Christ he said Jesus Christ I love the kind of result I see if Jesus was a businessman it was rotting the business had exploded just in a space of six months. And Nicodemus, being another businessman, said, I love what I see. And Jesus Christ says, I know what you're asking me. How do I produce a result? So that was what Nicodemus was asking. He was saying, I love the growth I see. I love the trajectory. I love the way your staffs are behaving. How do I produce this kind of result? What did Jesus Christ say? Jesus not said Nicodemus, A, B, C. He said, no. He said, except a man be born again. What was he saying? He was saying to him, simple. Why I do the things I do is because of who I am. I've come to a place of maturity. I've come to a new dimension that makes me function differently from you. So for you to do what I do, become another person. Nicodemus had never had any teaching like this before. That for me to improve my results, increase my productivity, I must become another person. Because all he had had was the religious Pharisee kind of teaching that would emphasize that do this and do that. They did not emphasize that total transformation from the inside will bring about change. If you are going to change your life, if you are going to see some result, the first thing that was happen is this. The change must come from within you. Remember this. Every organization is a reflection of the leader. If you have a stock organization, the leader is stock. If you have a disorganized organization, the leader is disorganized. If you have a clumsy organization, that's what the leader is. It's not by fixing the organization first. The leader has to fix himself as he fixes himself he will have the capacity to fix the organization so this is why I said you can conquer your world until you have conquered yourself so if you are going to increase in productivity you must know something that the activities on the outside will amount to nothing except it aligns with the belief and the capacity on the inside so someone says how do I change the inside one of the ways we change the inside is so I'll give an example so 
You are trying to build a multimillionaire company, but on the inside, you are filled with the image of poverty. You are trying to build a multimillionaire company, but you don't have managerial capacity to establish that. What do you do? From a place of faith, this was in terms of faith, you go into the world and you begin to practice the counsel that God gave Joshua. God told Joshua, if you will do what Moses did and do beyond what Moses did, because Moses brought Israel out of Egypt, but was not able to take them to the promised land. Let me show you, let me show you God's wisdom in dealing with Moses. You know what God did? God understood the place of capacity. He understood that if Moses was born a slave and raised as a slave, a slave cannot raise other slaves out of slavery. So what did God do? God had to make Moses being born as a Jew, but he raised him out of the slavery system. He raised him in the palace of what? Of who? Of Pharaoh. So that the inner image of what Moses would be different so that when it was time to talk to Pharaoh he would not feel like a slave because that was not how he was raised he was raised as an equal to Pharaoh they played together as children so when it was time to talk to Pharaoh he could look at him straight in the face and talk to him there is no way a child that was raised as a slave would ever be able to talk to a king that way so what I'm saying this is that when God was changed situation and circumstances he begins to change the structure on the inside because it's preparing for a new level. And I'm saying so because when it begins to change this, certain things will be uncomfortable to you. But remember, old wine and new wine cannot combine in the same old in the same skin. The Bible says it will burst. So there must be some dying of some things for some new things to come. Some of you, the reason why you are stuck and you're not productive is very simple. You have certain relationships. You have moved with a certain crop of entrepreneur that all of you have the same results and all of you talk the same same way and that brings about some complacency and now that God wants to take a new level he needs you to leave that relationship and step out he told Abraham until you separate from Lord you cannot enter into the fullness of what I have for you in Isaac and as soon as Lord separated God told Abraham he said look because that separation brought about something significant if you are going to birth a new level there are certain paradigms there are certain value systems there are certain habits there are certain skills that you need to dump and begin to adapt new ones you have to totally alter your thinking system the way you think as a businessman that runs five staffs and you know a budget of 50 million is very different from the way you think as a, as an md that runs 200 staffs and does 2.5 billion and there's the difference from the way you think as someone that runs international company with headquarters in, in nigeria industrial headquarters in singapore and japan having motivational staff and god is saying for you to get there what i need to do is this i will begin to change on the inside there are certain things that worked on this level but they cannot work in another level what brought you from there may not be able to take you there you might need to do away with the old wine for the new wine skin unfortunately most of us gravitate watch this now human beings gravitate towards the family and not the effective oh my god human beings gravitate towards the family and not the effective i'll give an example if you go to a table and you're losing weight and you see salad you see cake you see Look out for the intercontinental, different kind of dishes. Most likely you will eat, what will you eat? You will eat what you like. Not because you know the salad is the, way, is, the way to, is the way to weight loss. But the reason why you eat that is very simple. This is the reason why. Because you gravitate to what you are used to. The apple and pandemic, so you go ahead and eat it. So what happens? In your development as a human being, there are managerial styles, there are concepts that you are going to. And as you are going towards them, there's a new thinking that you should have. But instead of it to flow with the new thinking that will make you more effective, you'll keep gravitating towards what? Towards the old things. You'll keep talking towards it. And that's why you cannot go forward. That's why the Bible says in the book of Psalm, forget not what, it said, it, it said forget the former thing. It said forget the former thing. Remember not the things of old. It said behold, I do a new thing. So as I close this morning, one of the things I'm going to say to you is this. This is what I'm going to say to you very powerfully here. If you're going to transit from a place of activity to productivity, number one, your objectives and your outcomes must be very clear. And it's become clear by you asking yourself questions. So you want to start an HR, a, a, HR firm. You know, say, okay, how much do I want to make in December? 
There are many of you that run businesses and you don't even know how much you want to make in November. And you have to change that. What's the outcome? So I say, I want to talk to this person, talk to this person. I know you want to talk to, but that's not an outcome. How much do you want to make? How many clients do you want to have? Where do you want your office to be? What, how much is your cost? The second thing is this. Until you have a deep conviction on the inside, the things on the outside will not change. So, you need to see yourself in your future on the inside. Listen to me. At every single time, you need to realize I'm bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. You need to pay attention. So what am I saying? Although you are running a five-mile company, take time and meditate and visualize and see yourself running a 500-man company and see your behavior at that level and begin to practice from here. That's exactly what God says we should do in meditation. In meditation, God shows us realities that are not in our current state. And as we begin to meditate, we begin to align ourselves with the reality. I'll give an example. As we pray, this coming within the next level, I say bring a point of contact. When you bring the point of contact, some of you are bringing a khaki or what you don't have. You are seeing in your mind. What I see in your mind? You are seeing something that you do not have in the physical, but your spirit has laid a hold on it. And guess what? Once your heart comes in specific and you believe with your heart, your heart and mind is going to create a pathway for you to achieve that thing. And once that pathway is created, the rest is story, success is yours and breakthrough is yours. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to say to you, over the next couple, next couple of days, take time and meditate on two scriptures. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and Psalm 1. Why? As you say, don't just read it carelessly. Meditate until something sinks down into your spirit. And when we pray in next level prayers, lift up your voice towards heaven and let's believe God for such transformation. Get up, let us pray. Hallelujah. Let's pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. What is a prayer today? This is a prayer I'm going to pray. I inject the multiplying power of the living God. I inject the life-giving power of the Holy Ghost into my business, into my finance that will bring about multiplication. Let's go ahead and pray. I inject it. The Bible says when men say there's a casting down, that you will say there's a lifting up. There's a lifting up. Jesus, mighty name, we pray. Will you lift up your hands towards heaven as I pray over you? In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over you today that you will not just have effort to show for your work, you have results to show for it. That your results will multiply. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there's anyone that is stuck, if there's anyone that is stagnated, that power of stagnation is broken today. Move to the next level. Have new testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ, every delay in contract, in payment, in recruitment, in recruitment, in promotion, is broken. Receive the, expa the expansion of capacity. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.